We need to make some corner braces for our chairs. Why do we need to make corner braces? Well, they help hold in our slip seat, and they're going to add some rigidity to the chair. They also help relieve some of the stress that goes on the joints. So it could be either done with uh, just screwing them in or joinery. So I think we want to do it the hard way. Of course. <laughs> For the chair seat corner braces, this is the angle I'm trying to reproduce. Essentially, I want to have this lie on the table so that I can then put tenons on the ends at that angle. So by taking my bevel gauge, I can find the angle that I want to reproduce. And then I'll transfer that to the table using the fence. So this is the angle I want, and I back this out of here, there we go, and I can just slide this fence over till I arrive at the precise angle that I need to reproduce. At that point, I'll lock my angle in and make sure it's exactly where I want it. Once I have this set in place, again carefully ensuring that my bevel gauge is still lined up, lock this tight against the fence, which seemed to have changed things a bit. Line that up again. And I can clamp this and down tightly to this part of the fence. And now I'm able to move everything, keeping that same angle, anywhere I need it along the table. Because on my corner bracket, I want my tenon, I'm going to be using a one inch tenon pair of double one inch tenons horizontally to slide into uh, the chair seat rails. I want them off the table a little bit, so I won't be lining it up dead center with this, but um, I can line it up off the edge. And you can see I can clamp this down, and my angle is going to be perfectly matched up with what I've scribed onto uh, my press brace. Because I'm transferring my angle with the bevel gauge from my original chair design to the table, I'm not as concerned about how many degrees that is. But if you wanted to check the degrees, you could use a protractor like this and simply line it up along the edge and match your reading. I'll be putting a one inch tenon on the end of my corner braces, which means I'm going to be using the A horizontal, a pair of those, the one inch tenons. You can see there's a quite a bit of material here that I need to remove. Rather than relying on the pan router to cut away that material, I'll first cut off this angle with the bandsaw. My tenon itself is back from the face of the inside of the corner brace so that when I put it into the chair I'll be able to slide that into the mortise and bring it forward and still have that mortise buried so you don't actually see that hole for the mortise. Since I'm using a double one inch tenon for my seat cross supports, I'll take the I have this one locked in place. I want them to line up to uh, set it square with the top. Then I slide the other one in just until it touches. And once I have them lined up, I'll tighten it down. For the height, I start at base zero. This is my block and this is the direction it'll go in. So I simply 
one of the great things about Panda Router. Place it under the gauge here. And because the distance is doubled, just look at me dead center and lock that into place. With my router unplugged, I'll set the bit so that the bite is horizontal. That way when I touch my bearing guide to the end of, edge of the template, you can see just to the point where it's going to cut into the edge of this. That's about where I want to clamp in my piece so that it's cutting into this first corner here. So I'll clamp my piece in. Before I can actually do my rounding, I need to set the stops on the side here. And I want my tenons to be 3 eighths of an inch deep. I set my stop at 3 eighths. so I need to take just a little bit more off. Right now I have my follower set all the way out. And if I back that off just a little bit at a time, I should be able to sneak up on where I want that to be. I'm gonna leave the dust cover off for now so I can see what it is. Still just a little bit too tight. And it's a little bit looser than what I really wanted, so I'm gonna have to make that a little bit, just cut it off and do it again. I've decided that I can go ahead and go with one and a half inch templates rather than the one inch template. The one inch produced a tenon that was um, seven eighths of an inch rather than one. Anyway, using a different router bit would give me a full one inch. So that's just kind of an estimate. Again, I'm bringing this up bringing up my uh, follower. I'm using a nine millimeter follower, a three eighths inch bit. Um, my bit is just biting into the edge of the leading edge of the point here. Um, by bringing this into the center, make sure that I'm at a three eighths inch depth that's lined up with my angle opposite of the other end. And I'm ready to do this. to set this in. Well, it looks like I may have to actually do a little bit of forcing or cut a little bit of the edge off and able to be able to uh, get that in. With the chair fully assembled, I took the rear angle of the back corner of the chair, the same way I did for the front seat, front corner. Then I transferred that angle to a template and then using the same method for the, as for the front by taking a vertical line off from the edge, it makes it a little bit easier. Parallel line to the edge of the template gives me a point that I can put my point into to draw an arc for the whole circle. Then line up my point to the arc of the circle to draw another arc and line up on the other point, the arc, 
to draw touching art and then draw my line at the point where those two intersect and that bisects my angle. So this is the angle that I use for the back chair rails. Even a half of a degree off can make a huge difference in this setting. So I want to make sure that that angle is split equally into two. So same angle. chair, uh, what I discovered is that the two inches wasn't quite enough space. It almost touches the back leg in the corner here. So I made that a little bit longer to two and a quarter inches rather than the two. And this is my extra for the tenon.